All right. Um, looks like Ian is first and second up, and then we've got a discussion on CA certs and cube system. Uh, if you have anything else you want to talk about, uh, put it on the agenda. We can also go over some of these in review things. Yeah, go ahead, Ian. Uh, sure. I uh, just wanted to mention to folks that we have some new Z tunnel behavior that's merged. Um, we're we're tracking open connections on inbound and inbound pass through. And when policy changes occur, we recheck them. And if they have become denied, we will close them. There's some optimizations that probably still need to be done around this, but it's it's out there and it's functional. So um, let me know if you find any anything that's unexpected with that. Um, but yeah, that, that's about it. Um, the second one is uh, trying to get started on having some sort of uh, CNI um, for our ambient integration tests. There's actually a PR out there now. Um, John has already provided some some good feedback on that about a better a better way to go about it. But essentially, we're going to look to get like Cali Calico and hopefully Cilium eventually um, as environments, platforms that we can use to make sure we don't uh, regress on any of the in-pod capture stuff. Um, so yeah, I don't know if folks have feedback about that or strong strong opinions, uh, but that's, that's the intent to work on at least. Um, there was, yeah, some, some sort of extra stuff that we were hoping to use that for. Maybe we don't need to anymore, and maybe it doesn't make sense. But the, the bulk of it is to, to get some, some third-party CNIs going. Sorry, John, I think I interrupted uh, you there. No, you didn't interrupt me. I was waiting to let someone else comment before I put my comment out. And um, So I, I, I think this in general is good, but I think we just need to be careful about what we do. Um, First, I think it's good to say we test things we integrate with. Um, that's always a reasonable testing strategy, I think. Um, I don't think it's great to test, rely on Calico to test the functionality of Istio in the sense that like we were doing the network policy to only allow the H1 port to test that we're doing H phone. Like we should have a way in Istio to know as an application that my connection was encrypted. And I think that I would rather go make something like that happen than rely on Calico. That being said, testing Calico is still useful on its own for the sake of testing Calico. So I do think uh, we should still do that. Um, the other thing, though, is we should be principled in how we do this. Like, sure, we add Calico Cilium, then probably 15 other CNIs. Are we going to add 17 CNI tests? Or you know, do we set a? a uh, cutoff somewhere, what's the cutoff? Um, the other thing is we do, I mentioned this on the PR, so it's you probably don't need to bring it up here, but we do have kind of a standard way of doing these kind of platform level tests um, so that they don't just uh, bloat into infinity of test coverage uh, matrix. Um, so we should make sure we follow that. But in general, I think this is, is a pretty good idea. OK, yeah. So thanks. John, should we open? Yeah, so just uh, want to say one thing. Yeah, Ian, thank you for doing this work, first of all. Uh, to John's point, uh, given you already have Calico working, if I understood correctly, uh, maybe uh, a follow-up step could be uh, using from the application to determine whether it's mutual TLS uh, was real. Not, so we don't have to rely on Calico or Cilium to enforce network policy on port 15001. But I think it's still a very good first step, just making sure we we'll only communicate on the edge bone, which we don't have a test at the moment, to my understanding. Yeah, uh, I have mixed feelings on even if it's a good test now. Um, I see the benefit, like, don't get me wrong. But there's also, like, if we view it from the lens of, like, a conformance test, uh, which we don't have today, but we're talking about making, hey, maybe used to ambient should be where the conformance tests live. I think it's actually a bad conformance test because it's it testing a behavior that I don't think is uh, even something 
desirable in the system. And it's actually a side effect of implementation choices we made in Eastio um, that are not necessarily the right choices or ones we should codify. Maybe that's reading too far into things and saying that not every test is going to be kind of a conformance style test and we don't need them to be that. And when we go make conformance, we'll just you know pick out the ones that make sense. Um, that's somewhat fair from, from my point of view. Um, but we should at least start keeping that in mind as we start to think more about conformance. Go ahead, Kasim. Yeah, since you mentioned the word conformance, uh, it may be worth looking at what the Gateway API is doing. They also have conformance with many implementation, many vendors. And uh, yeah, focus on what you said. You have APIs. We have, uh, you know, we 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 need to stop testing the implementation and and start testing the the, the API and behavior. Not be able to. Get. Yeah. So certainly the the new test that was added is testing that the current behavior is what we think it is and hasn't regressed. And you know, to that end, uh, it's maybe a maybe not even a reference behavior. It's just what we've got right now. And if it changes, the test will break, and then we'll refine the test or get rid of it if it doesn't make sense. Um, but I think maybe it makes sense to just break that out into its own thing we can track on. It's necessarily dependent on having a CNI that can enforce net policy if we want to do it the way that it's currently implemented. But it doesn't have to be one PR necessarily. Yes. Go ahead. Oh, uh, thanks. Um, so I, uh, we at Red Hat are interested in testing Ambient on OpenShift. And I was, I, I wanted to ask, um, is it possible to run integration tests from Istio source code on um, specific, on my custom Kubernetes cluster? In my case, it would be OCP. Can I do that quickly without uh, big effort changing uh, the prow scripts and so on. Um, it, wait, are you talking about in like a CI/CD or as a developer uh, one off? Um, doesn't matter. I, I would. I just would like to try to run all of the integration tests on any <laughs> cloud on on some OCP cluster to check uh, if everything works. Yeah. So the general answer would say is yes. Um, now, there may be some things that OCP brings in specifically that don't work, but um, you know it's it's not like you can only run on kind. I run it on GK sometimes. I know uh, people run it on other platforms. In the CI, CD, I know many people are running these same tests on their platforms. Like for Google, we run it on all of our different Google platforms. Um, I think we even actually have some Google OpenShift uh, support that we run the tests on. So. The answer is yes. There, you may run into some hiccups along the way. Feel free to shoot a message to me or on the test release or something. Uh, but it should definitely be able to be to be worked. There's a README in the test integrations folder. It might be a little out of date at this point, but it should give some some tips to get started uh, at the very least. So, okay. So I will reach out to you if I if I want to be able to make it work. Yep. Yeah, uh, I just want to follow up with what John and Kostin was just saying about the testing. So I do think the user would actually apply network policy on port 15008, uh, like what Ian was doing in the testing. So it is a common scenario for the user. And uh, I, I understand you guys are saying we shouldn't be testing implementation. But I do expect this could be one of the recommendations we actually put out to the user. Hey, uh, that's the only port you need. Uh, you could potentially set up network policy to restrict that. I don't know. It feels like we made a design decision that was suboptimal. And now we're telling users to embrace that to me personally. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I, I don't mind. I mean, I, I actually agree with you. If you if we have a clear specification, what is the correct behavior of this student? Then I agree. Uh, if it's just that accidentally we do something or another and users may or may not uh, want to do it, that's a completely different story. I mean, it's, it's one thing to say that uh, 
you know, user can apply network policies and they don't break for anything and they work perfectly and we test for that. Another thing is that one port may work or may not work. I, I, it's, 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 uh, it's messy. Okay, I, I think we we all agree that it needs improvement. Yeah, to to test uh, what the user is actually going to see, whether it's mutual TLS, they're not going to go there to check the port. Yeah, and keep in mind, like from the user standpoint, they don't just want to know was this TLS or not. They also want to know what was the identity that is connected. So there's a value beyond just what network policy policy can provide and providing a way for an uh, application to get that information. Uh, well, on this subject, actually, because uh, we, we talked about it yesterday as well, uh, keep in mind that, uh, first of all, it doesn't mean that if it is not on port 15500, it is not MTLS. It could be proxy as GRPC that is MTLS. It could be application on MTLS. So there are other ways to do MTLS, and we may or may not want to support them. And second, the important thing is to get the identity, not necessarily. I mean, yes, it's important that you it's encrypted, but probably you know that it's encrypted anyway because, you know, CNI doesn't provide you a way to tell you that it's encrypted. It just tells you that it's encrypted. Now, the question is, uh, how do you get the identity of the peer? Because that, that's the main purpose of, uh, of authentication, peer authentication, to know who you are talking. And for that, we need something because for HTTP, we have it from Waypoint, but for TCP, we don't have anything. And if we have that, that provides a way to tell you that you got MTLS or whatever else happened behind the scene because another implementation is something else. So I forgot, uh, why are we not using metric API for this? Because I remember the metric API does have identity and mutual TLS in there. Uh, you mean the prefix, the, the metadata exchange in TCP? I don't know what you are talking about. The, we, we agreed last time. Yeah, I was referring to like the metrics, the layer for metrics we provided in C tunnel. Oh, yeah, you shouldn't query metrics to for a meta application to know whether the properties of the connection. I think that's kind of a layering violation. So, Last time we discussed, I think the agreement, and obviously everything changes uh, periodically, uh, was to 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 have a, an option to use a, a proxy. And previous agreement was to use uh, what John suggested, which is a, a call to the tunnel, to a, well, a service that you pass uh, the IP port of address and, and port, and, and you get back identity and other information. Uh, both of them were, are very good, and we should probably do them, but uh, yeah, I don't know what's how, how we can get that. Okay, yeah, I was referring to uh, you go you go to like the you query the port, I think it was 15020 or 21 uh, slash metrics API to get the metrics. I guess that rely us relies on you have to be in the pod. Oh, figure out the IP of the bar to, to call that? No, but metrics metrics will not tell you what is a peer connection in a So you have a connect, you accept a connection on TCP. How do you know who you are talking with? You need metrics just give you statistics. Uh, John's uh, PR, which I don't think he merged, you, you would do something like that. I mean, connect on port one, five, whatever, and pass a peer, IP, peer port, I mean, or the, the quadruple, and then you get, you know, what is a remote ID and other information. And with uh, AJ proxy is the same thing. In prefix, you get the PR information. Okay, so yeah, we need the we need the metadata on the connection, not um, yes. just metrics, which is afterwards. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. By the way, John, can you merge that PR? Um, it would generally need to be approved, so it's not really up to me. I think it's been closed by the stable bot by now, but if there's interest, I can rebase it. 
Um, the code's changed quite a bit, so it'll be some effort. So I'll, I'll, I'll open it if people say that they're likely to approve, but probably not if, you know, there's no intent to, to move forward with it. But I personally think it's Me. fine. I think we should not promote it to beta next week, but I think it's a good thing to get in and experiment with. At least for debugging, is super useful, and it's better than nothing. I don't have nothing. Yeah, at the very least, in our test, we can use it, and it's useful for a test. So I, I, I personally would love to have something like it. Um, the alternative is to have something like a status page hosted by ZTunnel, where you can look at the active connection states and peers. Uh, yeah, but you want your own connection, and you don't want a list, because that can be very large. And I mean, yeah, yeah I mean, testing it's, it's, is I mean, good, but if you it, want yeah. something fast, it is, it is. I think the status yeah. page would be fine for a test, probably not something we'd want a user to, to use. Yeah, no, never for yeah. a user. Yeah, it'd probably be exposed uh, over local host on ZTunnel anyway, so you user couldn't even use it. Um, right. That's probably a good thing to add in general, and with Ian's PR, that was about authorization policies. <laughs> uh, but given that it's not tracking all the connections, it's probably an easy place to put, so. Um, I think that's even if we do the other thing, I think that's maybe something nice to add as well. By the way, John, your PR half of it was tracking connections, so that's why it kind of it's probably the right time to introduce it back because he's tracking connections. Ah, so. yeah, good call. Yeah, yeah. Yes, that's that's very true. Um, so Ian, I don't remember how abstract your thing is, but now you potentially have three consumers of connection tracking. <laughs> I tend to recall it was pretty pretty well structured, so. But we can always, I, I wouldn't change your PR even if it's not, we can always iterate after that if we decide to use it in other places. But good job. It's good when you make something and suddenly you have three people wanting to use it. Yeah, we can certainly work on like refining it if, if need be or as need be. Yeah, John, I think it would be useful to resurrect your PR, but it, yeah, I think it would also be useful to have a status page. I think that would actually be very both. useful. Yeah, both, both are useful. Yeah, let's, let's, yeah, let's do why well, I say we should do both as well. Any objections before I spend spend some time on, on this? I mean, obviously, review the PR and whatnot, but. John, we may discuss it, the, the API structure and the, the URL format and, and the JSON result. Yeah, that's easy so, to change. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, so it sounds like the path forward for Ian is one, we should probably merge the tracking PR. It will make sure we review it, of course, merge that. Um, we can do the Calico testing, but make some minor tweaks that we talked about in the issue in here. Um, it will follow up with the metadata server lookup and debug page, which we can use in the tests um, to decouple the test from Calico. Uh, so make the Calico just a is Calico supported? That sound sound accurate? Yeah, that's yep. my understanding. Cool. Then yeah. I will review your PR and probably work on the metadata server revival and probably open an issue for the debug page if someone wants to pick that up. So the connection tracking is already merged, right? Am I right? Yeah. Uh, oh, cool. That makes it easier. We already did one. Yeah. OK, so I think uh, we still agree there's a value to keep Calico or Cilean test just as a generic test, not so much focus on mutual TLS port 15008. I think maybe just one test will be sufficient. Yeah, at the very least, I think we'll just break it out if we want to add in some sort of test with net policy for for other reasons we we can circle back to that once we have a cni that can handle it yeah but i think it would be good because uh, we expect a network policy coexist and continue to be enforced it was ambient yes okay cool yeah yep Kasten? Uh, one one last comment uh, are we doing anything for the egress connection are we tracking all the egress connections and 
do you want to have an API to get the actual peer identity of the server or you just trust that it's always be there? It's orthogonal, we don't have to do it at the same time. I mean, Istio doesn't have egress authorization policy right now, so it wouldn't be required for that. No, no, not for authorization policy, of course, just for information. I mean, if you want to know that, you know, uh, you got uh, what what was the, the server workload Here. identity and, and that it was TLS and other metadata about egress. I don't know. It's, probably it's, it's, kind of awkward. Lower, but... it's kind of awkward even like con conceptually, because if I open up a socket, then how do I know once it's actually reached the other end? Like I have to pull or I guess you don't know if it just hang until it's done or something. It could be done for sure, but it's the inbound side's much more clear. So if you open a TLS, if you open a TLS connection when when the shake is open and you know before you send or whenever you want, you can get the peer identity and you, you know it's very uh, yeah, but you don't. With, uh, with but the application's not doing the TLS right. They just open up the connection. The TLS is offloaded, so no, no. But but if if an application is doing TLS by itself natively, yeah. then it will have all this information. Oh uh, no, I, yeah, I agree with that. Information. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So parity, basically, you could write a TLS implementation that was just for making those calls and relying on ZTunnel to do the handshake and all the encryption, but still get the, the information that TLS satisfies the interface. Yeah, I don't, I don't have any objection to doing uh, outbound. I would suggest we just split it from the inbound one and just add it to the backlog. Until we have a strong, like we have a stronger use case for the the inbound one, right? Because of all of C. Okay. Yeah, for what it's worth, I struggled to in my initial PR. I had done both sides, but had struggled to actually even get like <laughs> it to work with a Go application. Like it's very hard to do that with the way that you typically use connections in Go for at least HTTP. Uh, so I agree, we'll put it on the backlog. It, we can, it can be done, it's just a bit tricky in general. Yeah, I was not saying HTTP, I was saying that TLS connection. So re-implement TLS connection from Go. Because HTTP, we have the header, so let's not, I mean, for HTTP, you would probably never use this because HTTP you had waypoints that add the X, whatever, and, and you don't have to do anything, it's just TCP. Cool. Shall we move on to the last one, which sounds really simple, but ended up being a lot more complicated than I think anyone expected? Uh, okay. So I will start with, I will share some context for those who would are not familiar with that PR. So um, I will. I wanted to simplify installation of Ambient Mesh on OpenShift because um, in OpenShift we have the concept of security context constraints API, which must be, and and these security cons constraints must be applied to namespaces. And um, if you want, if users want more privileged workloads. And since ZTunnel um, needs to be privileged and requires some NAT capabilities, it needs the highest uh, security context constraint, which is applied by default to the cube system namespace. And users usually tend to not modify security context constraints because it's um, they see some security concerns and are not, um, you know, uh, comfortable changing these settings. And therefore, that will be easier to install ambient, uh, I mean, the ZTunnel in kubesystem. But um, kubesystem is uh, excluded from uh, sidecar injection, and therefore, ECOCA root cert is not created in that namespace. And therefore, I submitted that simple PR, which introduces a um, environment variable to, to, to create that uh, config map, but uh, it turns out to be pretty tricky um, because it affects the ECCTL bug report and um, injector list and probably other parts of code. Um, so 
yeah, it, it seems to be complicated, and, and therefore, um, we, I, I need to know your opinion how, how to approach this. Yes, Kosten, please go ahead. I want to expand a bit the scope here. I mean, your PR is, is interesting and important, but uh, the fundamental question is we have this challenge in Istio Classic where you can have multiple CAs and this kind of multi tenant model where, where some workers get one CA, some workers get another CA, some workers use an Istio D, another, another Istio D. If we are in ambient work, I don't know if we if the concept even makes sense. I mean, how would it work? Because the tunnel is per node and, and it doesn't, you cannot mount you know, uh, was, uh, it, 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 it gets very complicated. So the question is, do we want to preserve this, uh, you know, never to, to GA, never, uh, I don't think it has too many users and doesn't, doesn't have any good design for an ambient uh, model. And if not, then your PR becomes super simple. I mean, just create, if ambient is enabled, create the, the root everywhere, and that's it. I mean, or just create a new tube system because the tunnel will not need it anywhere else. I think that there's some platforms though that have that was my initial reaction was just say okay just add it to cube system um, but I think there's some platforms that deny rights to cube system um, like I believe GK Autopilot yes, Keith, was one of them um, yeah Keith from Microsoft told one hour ago that um, on AKS they um, they prefer to install Z tunnel in Istio systems because Istio system because um, users should not uh, use Cube system for their work workload. So um, it seems that AKS is one of the platform where it won't be allowed or is not recommended. I'm not sure. It still doesn't prevent creating. I mean, you could create and uh, uh, attempt to create one in Cube system. If it's not permitted, no problem. It means you're not in the platform that supports uh, creating stuff in Cube system. Um, uh, my point is to not expose I mean, we can we can hide from the user and and, and also not if you are working on OpenShift, do you want the tunnel and CMI to be installed by the user or be something that the platform provides and, and put it on the node? And, uh, so do you want users to even have and and and, and some charts to, to mess with it or or just the operator and and treat it as the same with CDO? Other CMI? Uh, I'm not sure if I correctly understood you because uh, Sami was distracting the connection. Um, so, um, get, get to do it at the platform level. I mean, put it on the node or, or, or not have the user install it in the first place because it's a high privilege operation. It's very sensitive, upgrade is tricky. So, uh, it would be probably better off to be part of the platform underlying. I mean, just the regular cube system, not install with M charts, but install whatever system is installed. Yes, I understand. Um, I, I don't know how to answer this question because you know ECS is not pre-installed on on OpenShift, and it's you know users have to install it, and it doesn't not. I think it doesn't matter if users install it or the operator. I mean the Kubernetes operator, um, because um, even if you use EC operator, you have to have proper privileges. So effectively, it doesn't matter. In my opinion. Um, okay, so, no, I'm just, just curious. Okay. I am more focused on on the convenience, and um, I would like to make it as simple as possible. And not, you know, some time ago we uh, made some changes in Istio and sidecars uh, to not require the NAUID uh, security context constraint because. To, to, to simplify the, the user experience, right? And remove uh, prerequisites as many as possible. And this is another one. Um. Uh, yeah, I don't know if Kostin actually said this or if I just interpreted it wrong, um, but I think he suggested we can just attempt if it's in cube system and if it fails, that's that's fine. Um, and just make sure we don't you know explode on failure, which I don't think we do, but maybe we can tone down the logs or something. Um, uh, to me, actually, that sounds, I don't mind a config setting um, that's like CA root namespaces ignored or whatever, which is, I think, what you mentioned in the most recent comment on the PR. I'm perfectly fine with that. Uh, but I'd be fine with this approach, too, where we just allow routing to the, the namespace. And if we don't have permissions, 
uh, no problem. Maybe we add some logic to uh, you know suppress the log so it's not like an error message that people uh, file an issue about. Maybe just an info level or debug even. Um, yeah, either that or it name late blah. Uh, sorry, that or just environment variable uh, that doesn't impact the injection. I think would be uh, a good path forward. Okay, that's great. So can I narrow the scope of the PR as I suggested at the beginning? Uh, that works for me. What about Kostin or anyone else? It looks good. I mean, anything can add more APIs and use it. It's, it's good. Uh, which one, though? I mean, Skip we system. said... Don't I was saying, it I was saying either an environment it, or we fails. just... Okay. Uh, try. Just try. Just try. And if someone complains, but if you can just try and not have user visible stuff, better. But only cube system. You can cube system ignore everything else. It's just um, yeah. Okay. So try in cube system, and if not possible, then log an error. No, or no, an... we're gonna log inform. Hey, this platform yeah. doesn't allow run the tunnel in cube system. Okay, makes sense. Thanks. Okay, yeah, I, I think it makes sense um, as well. Cool, thanks for... <laughs> uh, we went through a lot of discussion on the PR. Thanks for, for that and, and coming here. I think this is a, a good outcome, even though it was a decent road to get here. Um, anything else on this topic? Yeah, Kostin? Uh, the other things that I, I, I mentioned, which is we want in ambient users don't enable this kind of multi-CA, um, multi-tenant multi stuff. Or if we do support it, how? That's really the question. Uh, CA, multi-tenant stuff. The intent of this was uh, of, of the inject namespaces was to allow user to install five ECUD, one ECUD per uh, user. And then you specify, uh, you know, in each ECUD, you specify which namespace are what. The CA, it's also kind of one CA per user. So we have kind of parallel installation of ECUD. And with the panel. So I, uh, I think we may be kind of mixing things up, if I understand right. There is a different setting. Well, there's one setting that's a hard-coded list of ignored namespaces, which was because, uh, well, if you inject cube system, then you end up with a circular dependency, and that's very bad, right? Um, then there's another one that you can configure the namespaces that you write to. Um, but it is still a valid question, though. I, like, I, I didn't mean that it doesn't really change what you said much. Um, uh, so yeah, I guess if you... Today, how it would probably work is if you have multiple, you would only have one that could include cube system, because uh, of course, otherwise they'd keep overriding each other. And so Z tunnel has to live in one tenant, which kind of makes sense because it's only going to connect to one ECD, so it only needs one CA cert. Then, um, I mean, there is still an issue if you want to run like multiple Z tunnels, I suppose, but then that's kind of getting into a weird category, right? Yeah, that's a weird part. I mean, you you cannot have too many V tunnels, have demon sets, and if you start having V tunnel as one, then what happens to the others? Maybe non ambient only, or what? What's the behavior? Yeah. So Jessica, was this related to? I remember you. Uh, somebody from Red Hat, maybe you or maybe Daniel submitted a PR to add um, Z tunnel to be revisioned. Was this related to that? So that you could potentially run multiple Z tunnel, maybe even in cube system namespace? No, we recently we tried to make Istio CNI revisioned, but oh, it was, CNI, sorry. <laughs> it was not related. By the way, in this model, would you run the CNI also in cube system? Or would the CNI still relate as in this system? Do you mean multi-tenant mode? 
uh, I mean, when you run Zitano in Istio system namespace, would you also run your Istio CNI there oh. too? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. Um, CNI is already um, installed in Cube system uh, in OpenShift profile. Um, yeah. So this is CNI. Okay. That there. makes sense. Uh, yeah. I think on Google Cloud too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I right. think, Lynn, I, you may remember I said I got it working on Google. Um, I think I might have just manually copied over the or modified um, some settings so that that's that's how I got it to work. So I think actually this would help uh, with GKE as well. Um, I haven't had too much of a chance to test there, but um, on GKE the reason is like some quota or something. So I, I think I probably just manually added the quota um, so it could run the Istio system, but we'd probably prefer to not have users do that. So. Got you. Yeah, I remember our team also had to install the CNI in the in the cube system on GKE. Yeah, one thing we do have on the CNI chart, it automatically detects. I don't know if we have it for OpenShift, but at least for GKE, we auto detect it and set the default to cubes system. So we'll probably want to do a similar on Z Tunnel at some point. Um, but it didn't work at all in GK until like a week ago. So, so it hasn't been a top priority to make it work seamlessly. Well, one extra comment uh, as we we're discussing uh, before about uh, having other gateway implementation interoperate with ambient and so forth. Uh, moving issues uh, CNI and, and uh, Z tunnel into, into cube system is also pretty good because it's leading to the same kind of uh, message that it interoperates more than Istio and it works with others. So it kind of becomes sort of, you know, platform CNI and platform ambient, not uh, Istio specific. Okay, I have no more questions. Thank you very much for uh, clarifying your point of view and sharing opinions. I really appreciate it. Yep, thank you. Uh, thanks again. Yeah, uh, just ping me or I'll probably get a notification when the PR is uh, updated and I'll, I'll go take a look. Yes, yeah, sure, thanks. Okay. Uh, we have about 20 minutes left. If there's anything else we want to chat about. Yeah, so one thing I want to bring up is uh, yesterday I went uh, to uh, a drive ambient to beta document, uh, try to see, you know, what are the remaining uh, outstanding items uh, now that the import is being merged. Um, so one of the item, I think it's uh, related to telemetry, what telemetry for ambient would look like. I think the Kayali team did uh, provide some feedback, but this is the area I think we really need our owner to drive through. Uh, Justin, I saw, I think you are still on the call, Justin. Uh, did you uh, say you assigned this to Lei? I was wondering if uh, if you can speak with him. Uh, you know, would it be possible to provide an estimation on uh, when this could be uh, for review? Because we we really want to understand the impact for beta for the telemetry work. Um. I mean, I can talk to Lay. I think he probably is going to need more context. I also thought, w weren't there other people that were interested in working on it as well? Yeah, so basically there are two people from Red Hat are interested. Uh, so I spoke with Jay. He is more interested uh, from a vendor perspective. I shouldn't say vendor project perspective from Kayali, uh, making sure Istio is providing the right uh, contents and metrics. Mm -hmm. For Kayali to consume uh, Sanji information, he's interested, but I haven't. I don't know if Sanji, are you on the line? Uh, I haven't seen much movement from him on this. Yeah, me too. Yeah, so I'm not sure if he will do anything. Um, and also, we've asked him to update the, the ambient user guide uh, after the import merged. So there may be a bandwidth problem with him too. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, I, I can talk with Lay, um, see about getting him to attend these meetings as well. And Costa, I think you've been working with Lay on telemetry as well, right? Not, I know not specifically. Uh, yeah, but... absolutely. Yeah, uh, and 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 uh, we had a lot of discussion about about this as well. Yes, um, and there is a discussion about the telemetry API in general, but it's still I'm not correct if it's concluded. Jay may have slightly beat out Whitney uh, <laughs> <laughs> by a hair. No, I was just going to ask him, is there actually a telemetry lead for Istio right now? Yeah, there is. Lay is, uh, okay. Plus Zuran. So I did pin Zuran. Uh, he works at Tetrade. He mentioned to me he's not interested in contributing to Ambient. Um, so yeah, he didn't want to own it. Okay. Yeah, so just with regards to, I just joined, right? And the first word I heard was telemetry from Lynn. Um, Good time. I, yeah, so I just wanted to say, right, so there's that issue. There is an issue, and, you know, my feedback for Ambient uh, in that issue was just really to kind of maintain as much of the status quo as we can, um, but with a couple of suggestion suggested changes, basically. So, you know, there is telemetry being generated right now out of Ambient, um, and that's pretty good. It's, I think it could just be a little bit better. Um, but as you mentioned earlier, like I, I don't have time or bandwidth to actually contribute to the code. Um, I'm too busy contributing Kiali in general. Um, so I just wanted to, I just wanted to make that clear, right? So I, I have some ideas. I'm happy to talk about it. Um, it's pretty minimal from what's already minimal change from what's already there. But um, anyway, anybody, if you want me to uh, get together with anyone to talk, I'm, I'm happy to do that. Okay. Yeah. It seems like um, yeah. I'll, I'll I'll see about I'll pull Lay in. I think there are some folks that were were interested in this. Um, and see if we can get laid to sort of drive it in. I know, you know, like as Austin was involved as well. So yeah, trying to try and get the conversation kicked off. Yeah, thank you so much, Justin. Uh, Whitney, I think you have your hand for a while. Yes, I haven't been super involved in the telemetry API workflow in Ambient, but I'm curious if any of this will impact like the overall drive to take telemetry API to stable. Yeah, that's pretty much what I was going to say. Is that uh, the telemetry API to stable is related in a way with uh, with ambient because we want to make sure that it works with ambient. And the I think the larger concern I have about uh, ambient telemetry is, you know, it's a good opportunity to clean up a bit and to adopt the open telemetry semantic conventions and other things. And and that's I mean, if we don't do it in ambient, I don't know if we'll ever do it. And that in large part it's determined by Kiali interest in starting to move towards open telemetry semantic conventions and uh, supporting them because we could generate open telemetry semantic conventions and what we generate, but we need to to to, to know what if Kiali is going to to adopt them. John? Uh, yeah, I think that kind of ties back into the thing. Uh, maybe you weren't here in the other meeting, but uh, that we should bring to the TOC of how we handle features in Ambient and sidecars and whatnot. Um, like there is a perspective that you know Ambient's the future, and we should kind of freeze sidecars and move everything Ambient, or different perspectives. And it really kind of ties back to that. Although I don't see a direct path in my mind, it was very clear. <laughs> it's less clear now that I'm speaking, uh, but I feel like they are somewhat related in many ways. So it's kind of hard to answer that question in my mind without having a broader discussion there. Okay. Because my initial reaction really was that it shouldn't be related and that if the API is stable, it should be stable. But I could see if we're, uh, you know, Costin's like am more ambient first perspective. Maybe that's a different answer there. So, 
Jay? Uh, yeah, so a couple of comments. One is talking about some of the telemetry that could be generated from ambient. It doesn't necessarily, the, the telemetry API and the actual telemetry being populated, the metrics of themselves being put into um, Prometheus are kind of like two different topics. So um, my comments in the issue around designing ambient telemetry is more about the, the metrics themselves and not so much about the telemetry API. Those are two different things. But with regards to um, Kiali and open telemetry, I think I haven't necessarily seen a, a really solid version of HTTP metric reporting um, out of a hotel. I don't know if that has come full, you know, been finalized more or is a little bit more something we can drive off of. But in general, you know, for, for Ambient to have any continuity for users of Istio, I think you have to maintain the current telemetry. Um, and then if you want to introduce something different based on OTEL, that's fine too, but they would probably have to go hand in hand and overlap until there was a transition. Um, Kiali itself, you know, we would love to have a, a, for, a format that was actually standard, um, right? So that we could apply it in different, different sources would be reporting in the same way. We could show traffic from different places more easily, whatever. Um, so we have nothing against that um, to, to, to get to Costin's point, but we're, with, with Ambient, we are just kind of waiting to see if there are gonna be particular changes, especially from the waypoint side of things. The, the level four stuff seems relatively stable, um, although I still think there could be a change, or change to the reporter. Um, so there's kind of different things being talked about here, and um, but I, I'm for Ambient, I do think people are going to go for it, but I think it needs to be like a reasonable transition um, if there's going to be a major change going forward in the TLEM. Sorry, John. Uh, yeah, I was kind of going back to a, our previous point. Um, I'm a little bit concerned that we're saying that like, we're waiting for this fairly important decision from our telemetry leads, but our telemetry leads aren't interested in working on Ambient. Um, that feels like a, a problem in that either we should convince them to be interested in Ambient um, or that we should not rely on them anymore. I, I think we can, um, uh, Lay has expressed an interest in telemetry and for Ambient. So I, I think, I think John is referring to Zuran, right? Maybe. I nope, it. I was referring to both of them. Oh, okay. Sorry, Justin. <laughs> I was assuming that Lei was not interested due to lack of showing up to the meetings, not because he explicitly it. said it like Zeron, but makes um, sense. <laughs> and maybe interested is the wrong word, but like, uh, you know. But John, in reality, you know, again, lead is just uh, you know word. I mean, the question is, you know, we have proposal. We have you know a lot of people who <laughs> working on ambient telemetry is part of the same product. There's no like security. Or I mean, we discussed CAs before without a CA or security lead uh, blessing us. No, I 100% agree. But what we had said previously, which is I think the concern part, is that the leads of telemetry are going to go put together a proposal for this, but also the leads are not going to do that because they're not interested in doing it. So then we have kind of a deadlock. I agree, we don't need the leads to, to go put together a proposal, but then we need to go have someone do it, <laughs> right? Yeah. Right, then it's I just going to fall to the TSC to do it. Right, I think this back, goes back to what we were discussing at the TOC meeting maybe a month ago, that we need a document on expectations and roles for the leads to decide whether we still need the leads, right? I didn't remember, John, you said we don't need leads now that we have maintainers, but I think Keith and myself, maybe some other people on the call was thinking, you know, we still need needs to be able to hold accountable for, but we need to provide guidance on what are the roles and responsibilities so that they know they, they, they have to do these type of work to earn that recognition. It doesn't come as, you know, as without showing up in meeting, as without producing contents and design docs to provide guidance to the community. So, 
So, so I'm going to, I'll, I'm going to talk with Lay um, later today. I'll see if I can get him to be more active in this. Uh, since he has a conflict right now, I'll see if that's a, a regular conflict that he has. Um, but yeah, we'll, I'll see if we can at least get him motivated to, to, to be more involved because I've spoken to him and his manager. I think this is within the, the purview of things that he should be working on. Well, thank you so much, Justin. Uh, the other thing I want to quickly bring up, uh, John, I think I tagged you on the on the GitHub. But the other thing I saw that's kind of like a beta blocker without having any progress. We do have other beta blocker, but uh, a lot of them are making progress. So having people providing working progress PR was on. Uh, this particular feature, I think you and uh, Keith was uh, very interested in ambient uh, getting to beta, which I'm going to send to the chat. I'll add to the meeting minutes. So basically, it's the enforcement to in, in the code to allow user to selectively enable um, alpha alpha features. This with alpha feature will be disabled by default. Um, I just want to make sure you know you or Keith are. Uh, still plan to have it um, to work on it and deliver it or maybe find somebody else if not. I did not necessarily have any plans to implement this personally. Um, but I do think it's important. So if someone else is able to do it, that would be great. Or I could potentially try and find some time to do it. I actually don't think it's that hard, probably just having a feature flags in various places. Um, so it, it could be a fairly small effort. OK, so maybe I'll ask a case if he doesn't plan, uh, we can reach out to other people in the community since it's not like a big ask. Because uh, I know there are people in the community it pins me about helping out smaller things. I just want to make sure you know we have an owner who knows that they are going to work on it. All right, thanks uh, for that feedback. Does anybody else see any uh, big beta blockers uh, that you want to raise? The reason I'm asking is uh, we've been also contacted by uh, CNCF about uh, does our project have anything to be announced at the KubeCon timeframe? So it's, a, it's certainly a marketing opportunity for us uh, to leverage. So I want to make sure everyone still feel comfortable we can still announce something around ambient uh, for beta at KubeCon. Sorry, I, I, I cut out for a little bit, but ambient beta, isn't that what we want to announce? Did you already say that? Well, we, we have to figure out what we are going to allow. Sorry if I, my voice cut off, right? So we have to, uh, I'm thinking ambient beta, some form, which yeah, is what we agreed so. with, right? Not necessarily have the build or the release. We may have the build, but not necessarily going to have the release. So we're going to craft that message. But in the meanwhile, we have to make sure we're on track for making good progress on that message too. So yeah, um, I think let's just say let's plan for ambient beta. And absolute worst case scenario, what we can say <laughs> is that we are happy that ambient beta is coming very, very soon. <laughs> uh, I Obviously, I hope it doesn't come to that, but um, I'm sure we can <laughs> cost it almost beta. Um, <laughs> That, that's I think that's fine. Like we can say in the upcoming release data or something along those lines. But worst case scenario, obviously. Does folks feel we need to separate out layer four and layer seven at this point? Um, or we just do a generic announcement of ambient beta? I think the latest proposal where you can use raw gateways, I think it's perfectly fine to have both of them. Yeah, and that kind of decouples the need to announce Right, obviously Istio has its own waypoint implementation for ambient. It would be nice if that was beta quality. If it's not, the ability to use other waypoints being beta quality 
as the integration feature, I think is pretty important. Um, and it may it may not actually be that hard to get the Istio ones to beta quality anyway, given they will just inherit a lot of stuff. Probably the biggest ticket item there is telemetry. And Louis, I, I meant, you know, take an Istio gateway, run it as a, with a separate IP and treat it as, you know, completely, you know, the, the, the rawest of the raw forms of uh, gateways where you don't uh, have a not... service, you don't I mean, the like rawest form is no Istio at all, so there's, <laughs> right. there's no real stability <laughs> level. It's it's GA, right? We, it's it is Istio, GA, that's though. what I mean, I mean. Okay, sounds like you all feel confident uh, just to do a blank statement of ambient beta oh. without needing to separate. Oh, I I don't necessarily agree. We, I don't think that we can ship brand new stuff for a waypoint and call it beta in a couple week turnaround time. That seems yeah, that one might be problematic. A the integration the integration point might be stable. Integration of Zitano to Waypoint is stable. Okay. To yeah, four, there, there three, beta. Yeah. Right. There are three different parts, right? There's just Zitano itself. There's Zitano and how it knows which waypoints to talk to and whether then there's whether the waypoint itself is actually stable. The first two we could probably target. Okay, sounds good. And for what it's worth, I think the changes that we are making will make it much easier to drive waypoints to beta. So my concern wasn't necessarily long term, but it's the like two week turnaround time from, you know, we haven't even approved the design doc. So it's saying it's going to be yeah. beta in a month. That's just for any features quite, quite, quite fast. But by the, or at least three months after that, it seems pretty plausible even. Um, part of the design is making it get a lot smaller so it makes it much easier though uh, you know when it's beta yeah that sounds good well thanks uh, for your input everybody and if you like uh to you know to add it on the announcement we're going to pass to cncf do let me know uh we'll make you part of it All right, I think we're right on time. Should we wrap up and close out? Thanks everybody for joining. Bye now. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Thanks.